today we're going to be looking at the tragic tale of the continent splitting and its many mysteries and how the colossals were involved in including their ancient prophecy. Inside of the golden era at the very beginning where it all began, the fire element was the very first official element inside of the monster world that marks the beginning of the golden era. This golden era was the time before the contemporary era. The contemporary era is essentially the era that we exist in now. So essentially you can look upon it as the original game is the contemporary era and then dawn of fire is the golden era. Then springing forth from the beginning with the fire element, the subsequent elements arose with their linked lands. So for example, we then saw the plants called air, water, and earth elements and lands all arising up into this grand new era that was about to take place. And each outer island in the golden era rotated amongst the continent. And the golden era isn't just known by this, but it's also known for its immense amount of technology and transportation. Transportation was a huge thing back inside of the Dawn of Fire. And it's actually something that we don't really see inside of the competition contemporary era at all. The closest thing that you're going to get inside of the contemporary era is how the seasonals travel amongst their different modes of transportation in order to get from the seasonal shanty to their individual island inside of their events. But that isn't really something that we can include as that's more so just a monster thing. Inside of the golden era, we're more so talking about things such as the teleporter that was available and the skyship. Tons of different transportation. And then of course, we had all of the structures that were there too. So it was quite an advanced era in comparison to what we know of right now. Inside of the era to the most important thing was the immense amount of teleportation energy that was circling amongst inside of this era and the amount of prosperity that emerged forward from all of this energy that was available during this time period. All of this teleportation energy is the exact same energy that is used today but obviously inside of the Dawn of Fire it was a lot more stabilized in its form and actually if we're looking back inside of the current era most monsters do require teleportation energy to transport themselves like when it was to handle all by the teleporter and was in a much more stable environment inside of the golden era. Nowadays, monsters can just harness this energy and zap towards wherever they want, which is not as stable as what it was inside of the Dawn of Fire. However, there's some exceptions to this rule now too that have sprung forward depending on the different dimensions that we're looking at. For example, you can use Dreamcraft to enter the Dreamscape, which is where Mythical Island is. And then we also see it with Fumpiz's teleport powers as they are very spherical. Fumpiz it's been described and therefore can bounce across the different dimensions with their powers that they're possessing and being able to teleport amongst the different dimensions, including the Thumpies Verts, which they actually originate from. And then we also have the Ethrals, whose biology permits them to enter the interdimensional highways, which is how most islands and dimensions are accessed inside of the contemporary era. Also, it should be important to mention here too, that dimensional travel actually wasn't possible inside of the golden era due to how stable it was back then. And also due to some facts that we're about to get into now. Now, at the very end of the golden era though, as you, all of you guys know, there was a huge shaking across the My Singing Monsters multiverse. Not just the monster world, but every single dimension that sat on the world tree, the Stabler Majorica. Inside of this huge shake, we know of several events that occurred. First of all, we had the monsters going to their individual lands. So all of the plant elementals went to the plant lands and all of the cold ones went to the cold lands. However, an exception to this rule is of course that all of the fire elementals, as described on the cave paintings, went inside of the living car. Inside of the living car, the fire elementals went, but then unfortunately, the living car then sank all the way to the bottom of the living ocean. This is why the fire elementals were unknown where they were for quite a long time as the living car literally sunk. So the monsters probably just presumed that the fire elementals were lost until they were rediscovered in the contemporary era once more. The Colossals of course imbued themselves into the islands during this period. And inside of this period, quite notably too, the Everall Island Colossal unsuccessfully tried to escape the cataclysm by going into the pocket dimension. It's well known that the Colossals did their efforts in order to save the monsters and that's the very reason why they imbued themselves. So therefore, seen as though the Ephral Colossal was still affected by the events, I think it's certainly the case that this Ephral Island Colossal, despite its efforts in order to save itself, saw the Ephrals and then decided to save them and the experiments that they had conducted in the very first place. As for the other Colossals though, we do know that the King and Queen Colossals, as they have been dubbed, the Am 
Amber and Gold Colossal. Both are a part of the higher plane too and not the prime reality. And therefore, I do think it's possible that these two were also trying to escape the potential effects of the Cataclysm. The Titans were also unaffected by the Cataclysm, seen as the Party Islands Globe Pole is confirmed to have got away. But however, the origins behind the Titans are quite unknown, so I think the exact nature behind why these creatures were able to avoid it is still a mystery and something that remains to be told. Most importantly though from this Cataclysm, and the most important thing to take away from the Golden Era's conclusion is absolutely that the foundations of the monster world began to weaken. This was from the immense amount of teleportation energy that had existed during this time period going quote unquote haywire. This allowed dimensional travel to become possible inside of the contemporary era, even though this wasn't necessarily accessed straight away as we know this came a bit later on during the timeline. However, the opening of the passage between the dimensions became possible to the ones now included on screen. And we also have to note here too, the new dimensions, including the cave crystal dimension and the dream space, which are brand new ones that we've not actually discussed on the law journals before. My theory is going by the immense amount of teleportation energy that spiraled off that the teleportation energy was the very thing that allowed the dimensional travel to occur in the first place. Seen as it went absolutely haywire and was no longer stable, it's my theory that this was what caused the events for the monsters to be able to teleport across the dimensions in the first place. And then I do think also that teleportation energy could have been the very thing that caused the cataclysm in the first place. If we're going back to the roots behind this situation, it's been confirmed that the cataclysm did occur thanks to the Colossals forgetting how to sing, and that is the very event that caused the cataclysm. So whether this is all interlinked and linked back to the teleportation energy is quite questionable. What could have happened to cause this unstabilization behind the teleportation energy is by far the biggest question, I think, behind the catalyst of the cataclysm. So the end of the monster world was nigh, but the Colossals saved them as we know. But how were the Colossals prepared to do this? At the very beginning, we mentioned a Colossal's prophecy, and this is something that people don't really talk about, so I'm quite excited to talk about this. The Colossal's prophecy is an ancient, well-known prophecy foretold according to Matt. There was an ancient prophecy that the Colossals were fated to go their separate ways, never to reunite. Meaning that everyone in the Golden Era was aware of the event coming up, as if the Colossals were always destined to go different ways, never to unite, there must have been some kind of mutual thinking going on that something must have caused this event. Whether they mistook it for facts or tale, despite nobody knowing the specifics, it was undeniable that there was some kind of telling going on of the events that were going to come from the Cataclysm. With the Colossals having the ability to imbue themselves inside of the islands too, it is questionable if any Colossal was able to predict accurately the events that were going to go. Especially if we go back to the beginning of the end of the Golden Era. When the Golden Era was beginning to conclude in the last few years of the Dawn of Fire, the stability of the monster world was beginning to fade and wane away. And we do have confirmation too that the monsters and colossals were worried about what the lack of stability could mean for them. Now the monster world was becoming unstable at this point, but it's never been referenced why it actually was. So it's my theory that the teleportation energy was beginning to dwindle even before the events that did occur. The lack of stability would have been perceived from not having as much energy for the immense structures and transportation of the air, the energy being used by the overseers, the celestials for example, to watch below. Therefore, those things beginning to dwindle away, I think is a sign that teleportation energy was beginning to dwindle towards the build-up. Now, did anyone predict this before? I think it's absolutely possible that someone could have, from A, the prophecy, and B, from the wanering teleportation energy, if this was the thing causing the lack of stability. Regardless of if anyone was able to figure it out before, though, who knew what happened inside of the cataclysm after it happened? The Colossals knew, of course, as the Colossals imbued themselves into the islands and it's been officially confirmed that they were aware of the events that were happening. We know that the Celestials unfortunately weren't aware of what was happening and were only mere witnesses towards what was going on and weren't necessarily aware of what had caused the situation in the first place and we know that the monsters weren't aware either. So most people weren't aware of the situation going on and seen as though the Colossals were one of the few to know it's likely they were involved too in some way inside of the events that caused the teleportation energy to dwindle in the first place before imbuing themselves. For what the cataclysm could have looked like though, look no further than this drawing put together by the wonderful Uskus, who I asked to piece together an image of what the cataclysm could have looked like, which was animated at the very beginning by 
Rot Zebra. Huge shout out to those guys. So along the center, I asked them to put together a huge earthquake-like cutting in between the two lands. Now, obviously the lands aren't necessarily like this inside of the continent, but I think this is an excellent depiction here of what it could have been like. And the environment behind it is wonderful. And Mammoth's expression, I still can't get over. <laughs> it is absolutely the kind of expression though that the monsters would have had at this time. And going through this must have been honestly a bit traumatic for the monsters. You've got a feel for the guys, haven't you? Aside from Muscus, I also asked the one and only Riles to make a concept art behind what the Colossal's prophecy could have looked like. So once the Colossals were being imbued into the island, I thought it would be really cool to perhaps showcase this with Earth Island. And you can see this here, the Colossal Awakening of Earth Island and the spirit being sucked in right inside. I absolutely adore this depiction and originally I didn't tell them to make the eyes open at all. I was just suggesting the idea of the colossal going in itself. So the fact that they came around and did this, I was absolutely so impressed by. And I think this accurately depicts the kind of feeling that the colossals probably felt at this moment too, is this was a thing that the colossals definitely wouldn't have wanted to have happened to them. And it was very much a thing forced upon them in order to save the monsters. So I think this is it's kind of the expression, yet again, that you're gonna expect from this event happening with the Colossals. But a question does arise from the prophecy, and one that I think might very well lead us back to the cause of the end of the Golden Era. If this was considered fate, then there must have been something, or someone, that must have thought that the events were going to happen. Tune in next time as we delve into the secrets of the Cataclysm further, and how it all binds together.